Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Travis May, and I am with the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. And I work in the research department. So um, I'd first like to thank the Library of Congress for uh, this and for having me. Um, so specifically in the research department, I work on uh, FRED, which is an economic database which has over 83,000 economic series uh, from 57 different sources, and those are both U.S. and uh, foreign sources. And right now, the majority of our data comes from the United States, but we are working with the OECD to add about 60,000 more series. Uh, so in about a week from now, we should have about 143,000 series. Um, so I don't know, many of you may be familiar with uh, FRED, but when you go to FRED, you see current data. Uh, current data, so here we have real gross domestic product, which is released by the Bureau of Economic Analysis on a monthly basis. When uh, you go to FRED, you'll see that this is current, and when you hear people talk about headline figures, they usually talk in terms of current figures. But there's another concept that many people aren't familiar with, and that's revised data. And often, economic series are incomplete when they're reported uh, because of the sheer nature and the sheer size of the surveys that are required. So commentators will also talk about revised data that comes out on a monthly basis. Uh, and you can see here's an example of uh, GDP being revised downwards. So the difference from month to month, or from quarter to quarter, is actually a little more severe. Um, when you revise data, uh, there are a few things that you have to account for. So we have the observation period, which is uh, the measurement interval. Uh, this here is the first quarter of 2013. Uh, and then you have the real time period, which is the time period that the data is valid. So the, me the, the real GDP uh, data is measured up until the end of April, and then it's released initially. And the, a month later in uh, May, they revise it. So on May 30th, May 30th, EPA revised the data, and it has been revised downwards. And then back at the end of June, they did it again. Uh, so that's the most current data, which is what you will see. Now, here's, here's the data visualized. You can see this on our website. Uh, also, the metadata revises. Metadata uh, can be revised uh, most commonly by uh, units. So the real GDP is uh, adjusted for inflation. We have different vintages here which use different base amounts. Uh, and in fact, the BEA is going to announce a new unit in August, which means we have to go through the entire database and change uh, a lot of things. It's a lot of work. Um, so all of this, when these changes are made, they go directly into the database, and they go uh, into Alfred. So they are archived for posterity. Now everything, as it's updated on FRED, is actually just a smaller part of a larger database. FRED is probably, well not probably, it is more famous than Alfred. More people are familiar with FRED. But Alfred is really the main database. So I want to give a little history on Fred and Alfred, since Fred is about 20 years in the making, and it originally started out as a text uh, repository, uh, text files with numbers in them, and you couldn't really do anything with them. Our former director of research, Bob Rash, was wanting to evaluate uh, some of his colleagues' former uh, research. He went to uh, numerous sources, and including the, the actual sources of data for original releases of economic data. But he didn't find anything. There's a reason for this. It's too costly for most institutions to do this. It costs a lot of time, it costs a lot of money, and there's very little return on the investment for them. So they don't, they don't store revised, or they don't store the old data. They just... Uh, they issue the press release with the new data, uh, they update it, and then they write it over, write over it, and it's gone. It will be in a hard copy. Uh, you can go back and you 
find all this old data, but it's not easily accessible. So, and there are a few places that have actually done this. Um, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank has a, has a database, and the unfortunate thing about this is that they only do key economic figures, and they only go back a few years. So it's not comprehensive, and it's not very useful for most researchers. So what we did at the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank was rebuild Fred from scratch to handle vintage data. Um, that, that required a lot of people to go back, a lot of interns, a lot of people low on the totem, to go back and dig through the research library and construct data points manually. Uh, most of the data points go back to 1996. We took some key figures and we went back to the 1940s the best we could. And any time that a new series is added, we usually start from there. We don't go back in time. The team is limited and we don't have uh, the resources. Now, why would you do this? Why is it important to have this information? So I like to think of an analogy of Western medical treatment from antiquity, basically until the 19th century. Uh, even dentistry was pretty terrible. But it was unsophisticated. Um, you can see that here is Aristotle's Zodiac Man, which is from antiquity until the 15th century. You see the same Zodiac Man, because after the collapse of the Roman Empire, most medical knowledge was based on Greek and Roman text. Now, you can see in the 1600s, uh, the plague, the result of this uh, lack of sophistication uh, resulted in a lot of social upheaval and change. Now, the reason that they were so unsophisticated wasn't because that they had uh, lack of reasoning. Our reasoning is no better, or our, our lack of reasoning is no better. But they didn't have the same amount of knowledge that we do now. Um, and evaluating monetary policy uh, is a very similar thing. We can look back and we see what people did, or what the Federal Reserve Bank did in the 1970s during periods of uh, stagflation, and we say, oh, these people were being foolish. Uh, so John Taylor, who is famous for the Taylor Rule, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but he analyzed the policy action of the Federal Reserve. And he, uh, well, originally, so the thing is the Fed adheres to certain rules during periods of uh, inflation. Um, they map inflation and production to policy interest rates. What he found was that they didn't, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors didn't follow these rules during periods of high inflation in the 70s. But he made a crucial error when he was doing his research. The study he used was with complete data, more revised data, that we can currently look at and say, oh, the picture is, it makes more sense to us. Uh, another economist, Anastasio Sorfanides, uh, redid the same study using vintage data from the 1970s. And what he found was that high and low inflation periods are indistinguishable in real time. When you look at them, can't tell. So you use the best knowledge, or best of your knowledge, you are using the right tools for the issue. They were just doing what they, they knew they could do. But, so that's, that's the importance of Alfred. But we also want to provide context to what, uh, all the data that we have on our database. So we have Fraser, um, which is a repository of uh, digital documents from FOMC minutes to congressional reports. Uh, my favorite one is Alexander Hamilton's defense of the first national bank to Congress. So we have uh, a context and history resources that are important to all of this. So you can find Fred and Alfred and Frazier at these websites. Uh, if you go to the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank website, you can uh, you can see all of these, and um, we also will answer any questions that you have. You can call us or you can email us. Uh, this is my email. So, are there any questions?
Um, this is sort of a two-part question. Uh, if, if you already explained how the data was being published, was it clear? Okay. So I guess the question is, one, how do you get the data? And two, um, lots and lots of people are sort of poking around the idea of using version control systems that were originally developed for software for data, particularly to be able to track changes and differences. Are you guys thinking about that? Uh, so we take the data, this is actually a big project we're working on right now. We take the data directly from the source when it's released. So we have a calendar that we constructed um, and we update the data whenever it comes out. The Most of our data comes from the federal government. They're one of the best resources and they release you know, data on on intervals where you can, you can expect it to come out. So that's done a little manually. We're trying to automate that process as best as we can. So say for instance, the OEC date, OECD data that I mentioned earlier, uh, updates, it, it's hard to tell when it updates. Uh, so we are, we wrote a program that scans the OECD database and pulls it in automatically, uh, and then updates it to Fred and Alfred. Now as far as, uh, version control. Um, we haven't thought about that. That's really interesting. Um, I'll have to actually talk to my colleagues about that. Um, implementing something like that to make it a little easier for us instead of just pulling data manually all the time. Thank you. I guess that's time is up, so no more questions. <laughs>